everyone, this is Jen Ledger. I am uh, gonna try and do a video blog rather than writing a post for the Skillet Book Club. Um, this week we're gonna be doing days 189 through days 195. And we're following the version Bible in a Year plan if anyone wants to join us or is unaware what book we're going through. So uh, if you go to uversion.com you can join in with us and um, if you're already keeping up to date, good job, because I definitely got a little bit behind. <sighs> but I've caught up this week and I am ready to talk about some of my thoughts. I hope that um, they'll make sense to you, I hope they'll be clear, and I hope that um, they'll be inspiring and challenging as they were for me. I would like to start off by reading from Psalm 7 verse 9 where it says, For you look deep within the mind and heart, O righteous God. And uh, this is something I would like to talk about because, again, I was reminded that God cares more about our hearts than what we do. He cares about our thoughts and our attitudes. And um, I was really hoping mainly to focus on David's heart, which I believe really expresses a few different um, precious things that I think we could all learn from that challenged me and things that I believe God wants our heart to look like. Um, it says in um, in the scripture that David was a man after God's own heart, and I think there's a reason that um, God loved his heart so much. There's a reason that um, David was that, and uh, I'd like to focus on a few of those things today. All right, if we take a look at Psalm 7, verses 3 to 9, it says, O oh Lord my God, if I have done wrong, or I am guilty of injustice, if I have betrayed a friend or plundered my enemy without cause, then let my enemies capture me, let them trample me to the ground, let my honour be left in the dust. I found this really super inspiring and challenging, because here we see the heart of David, we see how he's completely open-handed before God, and we see how his desire to be right before God and his desire to please God is more important to him than even living like this guy desperately wants to see something in his life if it's not right with God he wants it to be put to an end and um I guess I just find that really challenging because it can be so easy to go from the day to day doing what you want it can be so easy to forget to ask God how you can grow and how you can change but at the end of the day he's our heavenly father and he cares more about us growing and changing than anyone else ever will and um, I just think it's something that I felt like it was, was challenging because I want to be that way before the Lord I want to be really open-handed and I really want to be moldable and changeable and um, I think it's something that all of us could maybe start praying is that you know if there are things in our hearts or in our lives that are offensive to God that um, God would show us so that we can change them because our goal is to be like Christ our goal is to be perfect before the Lord and um, thankfully his grace covers us when we mess up and uh, he forgives us but he also gives us the Holy Spirit and he empowers us to be able to live a life that is pleasing to God and so I just think all of us could be um, challenged by this, that we could ask the Holy Spirit to allow us to have this heart of open-handedness before God and moldability before God so that we can just be shaped to be more and more like him. All right, the next point um, that I would like to talk about, I'm going to bunch a few of them together because um, they seem to kind of come together, but David was humble before God, he was dependent on God, and he trusted God. Uh, let's first look at um, Psalm 8 verses 3 through 4. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and stars you have set in place, what are mortals that you should think of us, mere humans that you should care for us? Um, here we see just a glimpse of David's humility. And actually I think I'm going to read something from the book humility just so we can kind of explain a little bit more what humility is 
Humility is not so much a virtue along with the others, but is the root of all, because it alone takes the right attitude before God and allows him as God to do all. It is not something that we bring to God or that he bestows. It is simply the sense of entire nothingness that comes when we see how truly God is in everything. When the creature, that's us, realises that this is a place of honour and consents to be with all his will, mind and his affections, the vessel in which the life and glory of God are to work and manifest themselves. He sees that humility is simply acknowledging the truth of his position as create creature and yielding to God in his place. Here we see David taking on this aspect that realising he is just a creature, everything that um, God does is in creation, we can see him everywhere, we see how huge and marvellous he is and it's that realisation that we are just God's creation, we are his handiwork, we're designed here to do what he's designed us to do and um, if we look in First Chronicles 16, um, no sorry, First Chronicles 17 verses 16 onwards, then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, who am I, O Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? Um, and now, O God, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving me a lasting dynasty. You speak as though I were someone very great, O Lord God. What more can I say about the way you have honoured me? You know what I am really like. For my sake, O Lord, and according to your will, you have done all these great things and have made them known. Again, here David just shows us how he realises everything that he's got is from the Lord. He realises he's completely blessed and without God he is absolutely nothing. And um, let's look again in First Chronicles 14 verses 10 through 11. So God, uh, David asked God, should I go out to fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord replied, yes, go ahead. I will give you the victory. So David and his troops went to Baal-perazim and defeated the Philistines there. God has done it, David ex exclaimed. He used me to burst through my enemies like a raging flood. And uh, here again, David defeats uh, an army as always he does. Um, has victory and he he never takes the praise for himself he immediately praises God and uh, it would be easy for David to become prideful or to believe that it was in his strength because he has a lot of mighty warriors we see previously in a chapter of Chronicles that um, he has tons of mighty warriors that could take down hundreds of people in one battle and but instead David praises God and thanks the Lord because he knows that it is him that has given him this victory. We also see his dependence on God, that he waits for the Lord to say, yes, go ahead, I will give you the victory. He waits and he, he also trusts God when he says that he will give him the victory and he goes forward and follows what God has said. We also see it in verse 13, when yet again, once again, David asked God what to do, do not ask them. Uh, do not attack them straight on. God replied. Instead, circle around behind them and attack them near the trees. And again, we see that um, even though he's already had the victory, he could be thinking, "I'm super strong." Again, he waits for the Lord's voice. He's dependent on God. He's dependent on hearing Him before he will move forward into the next attack. And um, I just think again that this is something that really is inspiring. There's something about this in David that we can learn from and um, are we humble before God do we realize that the only reason we have victory the reason that we have gifts talents blessings it's all from God are we dependent on God are we seeking God before we make big life decisions um, are you open-handed if God tells you something you don't want to hear like Oh, I really want to date this guy at school, but I kind of feel like God's not wanting me to. Are you going to ignore him or are you going to do it? How much do you care about pleasing God with your life? And that's something that um, we need to be asking God to change in us and that we need to be willing to be kind of violent and to choose to make those decisions. Like, 
are you depending on God and trusting that when you do what he asks that it's it's good and it's his faithfulness that will protect you and guide you through this um I guess these are things that I just think are really important to Christians but we can easily ignore um I know I can and uh I, I guess I just want to, again, challenge you guys to join me in praying that our lives would be like this, that we would um, be humble before God, that we would depend on hearing him before we decide where we're going to live or what job we're going to pursue, um, what, what, you know, what are we pursuing in our lives altogether? Is it popularity? Is it, is it a boyfriend? Is it, what is it that you're pursuing? And depend on hearing God's voice before you move forward these with these things and also trusting God that when we hear his voice that we can walk forward we can do the things that he's asked of us joyfully and uh, I think that's going to be the next point that I also want to talk about is that David was joyful before God that he always thanked and praised the Lord I mean obviously you don't have to look too hard in the Psalms to see David praising God to see him thanking for thanking the Lord and uh, um, he always talks about remembering what God has done that's something else that I think I, I felt challenged by I, I think it's really important that we remember what God's done in our lives that we speak about the things that God's done in our lives and we thank him let's read from Psalm 9 um, I will thank you Lord with all my heart I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done I will be filled with joy because of you and I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. Um, I just like this so much because, like, there's power in the things that we say. That's also a proverb that we read this week about the power of life and death in the tongue. And I just think it's really important that out aloud we thank God for what he's done in our lives. And um, that we tell other people about the marvellous things that God has done for us. And... God's done a marvellous thing for me, that's for sure. Like, I grew up thinking that I knew him um, growing up in church, you know, knowing a lot of stories about God and about Jesus. But I just want to tell you now that he completely changed my life. He showed me that that just going to church and knowing stories doesn't mean you know God. And um, he has saved me and made me new and filled me with his Holy Spirit and my life has been a complete adventure since then and even through the hard times that I've thought oh that was terrible I've seen after the fact that that was absolutely God's faithful to me faithfulness to me protecting me from something else that I didn't see at the time and so I guess I just really want to encourage you guys from this week's reading to be a people that um, really care about what our hearts look like before God that we would ask God to change our hearts, that we would be pleasing inside and out to him, that we would um, ask God to make us humble, to make us dependent, and to help us to trust him, um, that we would also be a thankful people, that our lives would speak of thankfulness rather than any grumbling or complaining, and that we would just remember who he is. Uh, remembering who he is will help us with our perspective and our outlook on absolutely everything. And if you just completely don't understand anything I'm saying and it seems really far-fetched to you, then I just I just want you to know that, that this Christianity thing is actually real. There is a God that actually wants to know you. He is real and living and that changed my life from a religion. It's not a religion. There's a real living God that wants to know you today. And it's through Jesus Christ, his son, that you can know him. And if, if you want to know him, just uh, ask, ask God into your life. Ask for his forgiveness and ask to know him through his son, Lord Jesus. And um, I just, uh, I hope that this, any of this made sense to you guys. I hope that you could be inspired. I realize that this is kind of long and boring, so I'm trying to bring it to a close now. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. I hope that helps at all. And I'll speak to you soon when I do my next week's post. I don't know when that will be, but sometime soon. Thanks everyone. Um, bye.